Hey gang, Jack Lair here. Uh, just doing a video response for uh, AT1138 and uh, the Thrift Dwellers question. Top three Tuesday, asking, what are your three top three favorite game franchises? Now this was actually kind of a tough decision, and it wasn't until because I watched the video when I was at work. And it wasn't until I got home that I walked through the door. I sat and I looked up. At all my games and realize that's number one bar none but we'll get there um, I've noticed watched a lot of people uh, with their videos and all of them are ones that I look at and I go okay I understand that and uh, a few of them make a lot of sense the one that jumps out for me and this is my number three is the Battletech or Mech Warrior franchise now I have a few of the games here uh, but there have been uh, 19 main games, uh, main games and expansions, uh, starting back in 1989, and going back farther than that, it was based on a tabletop game that went back as far as 1984. Now, the one thing I wanted to bring up is the one of the games that is missing here is Mech Warrior 3. That's the game that I actually built my original PC for. Like the first PC that I built, I built it to play Mech Warrior 3. I was introduced to heat management, loadouts, the different weights of the mechs, what they did, and the other cool thing is that I was introduced to the Sidewinder Pro, which is by far still one of the best joysticks, I think, especially with the force feedback. So that's number three, the Mech Warrior slash Battletech slash Mech Assault series. It's gone through a few name changes, but it's all based on big giant mechs blowing other big giant mechs up. On to number two. Number two. Come back with me, if you will, back to 1981, where then very young uh, Mr. R.G., Richard Garriott, soon to be known as Lord British, helped push forth Ultima into the world. Now, Ultima would go on uh, all the way through 2010 with its latest release. It would have 10 games during its time, main games, and it would have one MMO. The MMO that at that time would pretty much rule them all. Ultima Online. Now, there was Neverwinter Nights before that, and EverQuest after, but Ultima Online is one of the games that still, at that point, it was the Wild West of MMOs. There was no PvP flag. You didn't turn PvP on or off. If someone attacked you, you called for the guards before you would hope they would kill you. You put your money in the bank, and you never, ever followed anyone into a dungeon. And if they were red, they were player killers, you tried to teleport out or recall as fast as possible. This was my first experience to MMOs kind of as a whole. And it sucked so much of my life away. Between while I was in Hawaii uh, working for the Army, between uh, <clears throat> dance clubs and uh, playing this game, many hours of my life uh, were gone. Going all the way back in the series, they had the ideas of virtues, which uh, there was a blind merchant, and I believe it was Ultima 2. No, Ultima Quest for the Avatar, which I believe is Ultima 4. Regardless, once again, Nintendo... Re... Anyways. But you could steal from the blind merchant if you wanted to, but your honesty virtue would go down. Really cool that the game actually had your morality systems. <laughs> We've had that forever. They also introduced moon gates, which were a cool way to travel around the world. Uh, you had to watch the phases of the moon. The different phases of the moon would determine where you would end up, how far you would go along in the moon gate cycle. Uh, they later kind of did away with that in uh, Ultima Online. They also, uh, the magic system in here, had spells and reagents. So when you were to cast a spell, you would have to have stuff in your inventory. It was very, very old school D&D. &D, like you had to have, uh, what was it, a slug and bat guano to do fireball? Something like that. Anyways, yes, I'm a D&D &D geek. That's Ultima. That's number two. Now my number one series, favorite series of all time, started in 1996. 
So we had five games, and the last one was released in 2003. The game series started out on the PlayStation, uh, survived all the way to the Xbox, the PC, uh, the PS2, I believe, as well. And I don't know if there are any other ports of it, but I played all of the games. It was on the Dreamcast as well. Oh, I do have... Ah, I'll leave that over there. I'm speaking of the series, The Legacy of Kane. Now, these are just two of the games that are in the series. Uh, Legacy of Kane Defiance, the last one, sadly, and Blood Omen 2, arguably the worst one of the series. I believe the original Soul Reaver kind of dragged out a little bit there towards the end. Whole nother story. This is Cain. Cain was a nobleman who got killed, and part of the reason that he got killed is the whole plot that starts this game. He makes a deal with a necromancer, he turned into a vampire, and you come back as a vampire. Your goal is not to save the world. Your goal is to get revenge. This was back in a time when revenge was not a strong motivator in video games. We had people trying to save the world, people trying to rescue the princess. We did not have a lot of people out to kill everybody who had anything to do with their death. And Cain does it handily. Now the rest of the plot unfolds from there and we end up with the second character. So we've got Kane here in a later version, and we've got Raziel. Now, one of the things that made this series so amazing, and I really mean it, and my hats are off to these three gentlemen, uh, Simon Templeton, who voiced Kane, Michael Bell, who voiced Raziel, and the Elder God, who was voiced by Tony J. Now, if you may be thinking in the back of your mind, Tony J, Tony J. I don't think I know who that is. He has voiced Mrs. Sonny's Spider House. I don't know. Anybody who's seen the show will know it's about a bunch of a uh, family of spiders. Spideris is Tony J. If you ever watched uh, the show Reboot, Megabyte, the bad guy, is Tony J. He's in a whole host of other things. He did some um, Voices in a bunch of other video games. He's the narrator for The Bard's Tale, if you remember that uh, Xbox game. But those three voice actors and the rest of the crew, the, the animators, just made this game series amazing. Now, sadly, I don't think it's ever coming back. Uh, Ultima still got a shot. Mech Warrior is going to be coming back uh, as a free to play model, which I am all about. But Legacy of Kane. I think it's done. And kind of sad about that. Because a lot of people mentioned uh, some series that Halo, Halo's going to get another game. Final Fantasy. There'll always be another Final Fantasy. But Legacy of Kane is done. So just like a good, good book series where you're sad when it's over, you get the full story. But you're still sad that it's over. But luckily we still have them around. Uh, folks like you and me. Keeping the video games alive. So once again, my top three. Mech Warrior, Mech Assault. Number two, Ultima. And leading to the Ultima Online. And, of course, the Legacy of Cain series. My favorite series of all time. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, play on.